Hi YouTube family. Sorry it's been a little bit of a while since I've been on, but I wanted to get on and talk to you guys today about how to do a artwork piece on uh, your wall at home. So this is going to be great if you have kids that are into themes, things like that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. I don't know why I didn't time lapse this. I didn't even think about it. Uh, there's going to be two parts to this. Uh, since I've only done the first coat, I'll time lapse the second coat so you can see how I blend stuff in. And uh, there will be one other thing that I'm going to show also how to do. So the first thing you want to do, um, so this is my artwork, the start of it anyway. My son loves Groot um, and he's scared at night. So uh, he told me that if he had a baby Groot painted on his wall that it would help him sleep. So I pretty much just went online and I looked up cartoon images of baby Groot. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, now you're not gonna be able to see it as much here, um, but you're gonna sketch it out in pencil. Uh, that way you can erase uh, and modify anything that you need. The second thing that you're gonna want is you're gonna want a very fine tip paintbrush. I like this one a lot. It has an angle on it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, there you go. So it helps me to cut the corners and get edges really well. Um, so after you have the sketch, you're going to want to, it's up to you, but I like to outline my pieces in anything that I, any artwork that I do in black um, acrylic paint. So when you're going to the store, you want to pay attention. Um, not all acrylics are the same. This one uh, right here is a gloss. So it's going to look shinier when you've painted it on here, which is what I used on Groot. And then the other one is just going to be a matte finish. So you do want to consider how you want this to look. I do like the shiny up against flat paint because it really is going to make it pop. So you can see on his eyes that I made these with gloss. They're very shiny. Whereas you can see the rest of him down here is kind of flat. And even the first coat of the black up here is... Uh, is flat also so I really wanted his eyes to pop out and the green and the red to pop out so first thing you want to do is go ahead and outline everything in black so that's just to get your lines so that you can stay uh, within the lines you don't have to do black I could have done brown um, if I had wanted to it's personal preference but you want to get something to get that outline so that you're basically just coloring in the lines after you get that, you're going to have, still continue with the small brush to get in the small little spaces, and then you'll want a slightly larger brush for bigger areas. So I'm gonna show you just, basically, if you were to dip your paintbrush into the paint, you're lightly just going to trace the line down like this, dab your paint, trace a little bit more, it's actually really fun if you're patient and you like coloring and everything, you're gonna love doing this on your kids' walls or other walls. So when you get to the bigger spots, that's when you're gonna just use, ah, use your big strokes to go up and down, try to get as close into the edges as possible. And then the biggest thing that you wanna do is start with your largest surface area first. So you're gonna wanna start with this light brown if you were to do this Groot, because it's gonna be really hard to try to go around all these lines uh, if you do them first. I know this because that's what I accidentally did on this. I saved the light brown for very last and it took me all day to get in between the lines. So that is something to consider when you're doing that. If you really wanted to, because the background is so much lighter than the details here, you could do both your coats of brown, of light brown, and then go back and do all of these details, his eyes, his mouth, the lines in the wood. That would probably even make it that much more easy for you. So you're gonna do one coat, and then I highly recommend letting it dry for the day. It's gonna look dry probably within a few hours, but I have found that even if it seems dry, I'll rub my hand when I'm painting up like this, and then I get some off on my wrist like that. So. Wait a full day before you go ahead and finish painting that um, piece. So this guy has his first coat on him. I'm going to be doing a time-lapse video of doing the second coat. I'm going to get up close here 
if you can do, 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 see uh, right there, you can kind of see there's two different, different tones of the brown depending on how light I went on the paintbrush. I want to fill that in. I want it to look like from back here, you can't really tell, but to the naked eye without the camera, you kind of can kind of tell. So I'm going to go through and time lapse and do that to show you how to blend it in so that it all looks like a solid piece. The other thing I'm going to do is the last thing I'm going to do on this guy is his Walkman is going to be the outlet. So I'm going to take this outlet off and show you how to paint on plastic like this. And then we'll took it back in and when all is said and done, I should have a double coated paint job on him and his ah, Walkman <laughs> should be colored in. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. So you're going to sketch and you're going to outline with the paint color of your choice. You're going to usually want to start with the larger section first and then go to your detailed colors but it is easier obviously to cover over light than dark so um, I would start with light colors also and move your way to dark that way you're not having to do multiple coats to try to get a light color over the top of a dark color so I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the other two episodes of double um, double the double coat and the Walkman and please feel free to leave a comment and uh, share this with anybody you know. Thanks.